Hello everyone, this is Easy again, OneTechStop.net, and here is my review of Google's LG Nexus 5X. So I've got here Google's uh, latest Nexus flagship released a month ago in October. This replaces the very successful Nexus 5 released two years ago in 2013. Uh, the 5X is a really remarkable device um, comparing it to its predecessor. Um, it does hear all the right notes, um, has a familiar block form factor, uh, just a few improved uh, features and enhancements from two years ago. Uh, Google did try to get people to get the Nexus 6, which was released last year. That was way too big, uh, more of a phablet. But they went back to the roots um, and came out with this 5X. There is a bigger version, the 6B, but what I have here is the 5X. So to do a quick run through of the hardware on this device, um, looking at it on the sides, it is rather thin. It's a slim device there this measures at what 7.9 millimeters thickness it has a slight hump reminds you of the nokia lumia devices right there on the front you have a 5.2 inch screen uh 1080p resolution uh 423 ppi so it's not the brightest screen of flagship devices in 2015 but it will do for the purpose of this device here at the back probably wondering what this circuit is, this is your fingerprint scanner. It's really fast, we'll take a look at that in a bit. And this black, uh, this is like a sensor, this is actually the laser focus. And here you have your dual LEDs and your 12.3 megapixel camera. At the top, uh, there really isn't anything there except your microphone for recording video. There is also another microphone at the bottom there. And at the bottom, you've got your 3.5 milliamp audio jack. USB type C connector for charging data transfer. Um, yeah, so that's one of the few phones in 2015 that comes with the latest USB type C connector. At the side, you've got your nano SIM tray and in the box, there is a key to pop that open. On the sides, you've got your power button and your volume rockers. Those are also made from plastic. Uh, the phone, it's a nice build to it. Uh, the front you got your front facing camera right there various sensors your speakers also at the front i love placement of speakers at the front bezel i think that's the best place for speakers not on the sides or on the back like on other manufactured phones uh, you can see the phone is made from a polycarbonate this is the white version uh, it's a matte finish to it uh, it does come in black and uh, not a frosty color. But yeah, that is a quick run through of the hardware. Inside, you've got a 2700 milliamp battery, rather small for a 5.2 inch screen flagship device. And also, it is powered by Snapdragon's 808 processor. It has quick charging for your USB Type C, and it uses the GPUs and Adreno 418, which is usually what comes with the 808 Snapdragon. Uh, the phone is really snappy. I've been using this for about a month. And uh, just going to lock it, show you how quick you can unlock the device. First thing you want to notice if your device is actually face down to unlock it, um, you can just pick it up. You can actually program more than a couple fingers on the fingerprint scanner. So I had this detect for my two index fingers on both, both hands. I can just pick that up and put my finger and it unlocks real quick. It takes half a second or even less. So it's probably one of the fastest fingerprint scanners I've used. I haven't used a lot actually. But yeah, once you have it unlocked, you've got your typical Android 6.0. Um, the software is nothing new if you're an Android user. Uh, 6.0 Marshmallow Pro, some features, you've got your new Android Pay where you can use your phone to make payments just like Apple Pay. And the rest of it and um, you know all the stuff like the new Google now where you can go to a web page for instance let me see if I can go into a web page real quick and
and if you hold down the middle button and it scans the page and Google searches for important information on that page um, that's really what nothing revolutionary innovative with Google's latest Android 6.0 so I'm not going to be taking a look at that at all um, however the camera is decent it records slow motion HDR And see sometimes uh, what I notice is kind of laggy sometimes with the camera but you always want to make sure you don't have a lot of apps open in the back as you can see here the phone does have 32 gig internal storage uh, it's got 2 gig of RAM which is rather low for a flagship device again uh, and there you go I have multiple apps running here I my one month of using this device it's all right um, I'm not really an, a heavy Android user uh, but you know the typical lag I got a bit you know once in a while or apps crashing nothing insanely uh, bad but you know stuff you experience with Android devices once in a while you know however everything else works fine it's a really nice device if you are a Nexus 5 user um, obviously want to pick this up uh, now there is a promo Google's running um, it does cost $80 cheaper than it was when it was first launched so that's a nice little trick there um, there is no wireless charging on this device uh, the battery is not removable it does look like you can take it off but this is actually sealed in so it has a non-removable battery it has no micro SD card slot so this is the 32 gig version you have two options to go with the 16 gig version or the 32 gig version and like I said before the battery is non-removable and there is no wireless charging so your options are to get a battery pack to carry along with you but the, the battery life performance is I'm a heavy user this lasts me about between 9 to 12 hours of moderate use of heavy use I get six to eight hours of use like I can go to work and before it's nine hours if I'm done I would probably have to recharge it around the six hour mark but then again I am a really heavy user so I have a lot of stuff running in the background as you can see here so but the battery is decent and a big plus is the rapid charging where you can charge your phone from zero to sixty percent in 30 minutes and Google has this nice feature where going to show you real quick it actually tells you um, if your phone is charging quickly or if it's a normal charge so I'm gonna plug it in as you can see right there it says charging rapidly so what's going on now is if you have a substandard USB type C cable you can get either when it says just charging or it says charging slowly so you could have a bad cable However, there is an app in the Google Store called Checker. Uh, let me see if I can show you the app real quick. I'm not sure if I see how it installed. Where is it? Uh, yeah, there it is. So if you do buy a USB Type C cable, be sure to plug it into your computer, the other end to the phone, and this app actually tells you if that cable is a stop standard cable or if it's a you know compatible cable for your device so that would enable you to get only cables that give you that fast charging so yeah that is the the whole display screen it's really nice nothing fantastic about it it's rather normal 1080p uh, resolution screen with 423 ppi 
uh, nothing really uh, to blow your mind away with that but it's a really simple device I love simple devices I love stock Android and those are my two deal breakers and that's why I got this phone so um, if you love a simple designed phone not premium looking just simple nice to hold with the matte finish so no fingerprints there and you love stock Android then yeah this is the phone to get the Nexus 5X Again, you can read the article on our blog. Have any questions? Feel free to put it in the comment section. So, in conclusion, what do I love about the Nexus 5X? Um, I love the simple design, the polycarbonate plastic. Uh, you know, it's firm to hold. Really nice, rigid device. It looks rather strong, and uh, I love the fast fingerprint scanner authentication there. That's really awesome too. Love the quick charging from zero to 60% in 30 minutes. That's awesome too. And the phone does record in 4K video. And it has, has a whole bunch of different features. You can do slow motion, HDR plus right there. You can do a whole bunch of stuff. Panorama, panorama lens blur, and different effects. That's just with the native camera app on the device. I still don't understand why so much landscape um, is being taken up by these buttons here. I don't know why this could have been reduced to half, but you know, probably want to make it as comfortable as possible. And also the um, soft keys down there don't go away to give you more room in the picture. Uh, you can slide to the right to see your video. And you can, like I said before, you can record in 60 frames per second. I, however, did not see that option. Um, the options I got was here background I have those are my options I don't get the frames per second option like on my Lumia device but no worries um, as you can see you can record in Ultra HD 4k video and that's one of the uh, perks of this phone and you have of course the new USB type C connector and a lot of these new features in the 5x um, what I don't love about the device is there is no wireless charging there is no removable battery. Um, there is no micro USB, uh, micro SD card slot. So this is a 32 gig version and that's all I get with this device, a 32 gig version. Um, the other option is to go with this rather small 16 gig version, which I do not recommend. So there is no expandable memory here. Um, also, it is two gig RAM in a year where we saw high-end plastic devices come out with two gig uh, uh th rather three gig rams on their devices why google chose a two gig ram device on the 5x uh, is beyond me um i will tell you sometimes with a lot of apps open i do get lag or apps do crash my phone has rebooted once sometimes when i launch the camera it kind of laggy it takes a while to stabilize before i can use it so stuff like that then speaking of the camera uh there is no physical camera button which is a feature that most everyday more phone manufacturers are taking that out. I think it's just Microsoft, uh, Nokia that's left with putting physical camera buttons on their devices. And this is a really important feature for me because you can just, um, for instance, with Lumia devices, you can just pull it out, press on the camera button and it launches the camera straight away. Uh, when the battery is really small, it's a 2700 milliamp battery. I have no idea why, but I guess, you know, uh, Google was trying to differentiate this device from its bigger brother, the 6P. So I guess that's why they had to leverage some of the features on this device from the 2 gig RAM to the smaller battery to the rather mediocre screen, 1080p screen. Um, but all in all, it is a decent phone for a decent price. Um, I think it goes for $350 right now um, for the 32 gig version. So that's nice. After taxes, it should come out to about $400. So, yeah. Again, my name is Easy from One Tech Stop. Thanks for watching.